Welcome back everyone to another episode on the Project Nordinium server. Today we are starting off in front of the shop that we built last time and it's still looking fantastic. But while we are here, let's go ahead and check and see if we've made any sale. It's been a little while since I've been on the server, so hopefully we have sold some items. And oh, look, one, let's see, two. All right, this is looking three and even three more right there. This is great. What about, nope, we didn't get any over here. And it looks like somebody did get a spyglass. So the good news is we have made some sales, which is a lot more than we made last season when we didn't even have a shop. But with this build, there is a lot more room for having additional shops as we've got spots here, 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 and here. And I think what we are going to do today is work on a farm that's going to allow us to open up a second store. Before we can start on the farm though, there is one thing that we need to buy and that is an ender chest. This shop sells ender chests and let's see which container they are in. Container five, which is, let's see that's one, two, three, whoa. Five is going to be in the second row over here, uh, down here. Let's see, where are they? Well, that's out, oh. Wow, look at those. Um, oh man. Maybe I should have been selling ender chests instead of amethyst shards. In between episodes, I've been moving items out of the chest that I had stored here because this place just doesn't have enough room to use as a permanent storage. And I moved them to the storage room that I started last time that is over here. Now, the other thing that I've been doing is I found these two guys in this boat, and so I tamed them by breaking their crossbows, which takes forever because you have to stand in front of them with a shield and allow them to fire their crossbows until their crossbows run out of durability. Now that they are tamed, I went ahead and named them. So we've got Bob and his friend Useless, and you might say that Bob is next to useless. Now that we have an ender chest, we need to get this loaded up with items that we'll be able to use to keep us going as we work on our different projects. For example, we are going to take out this shulker box, which has a bunch of my good stuff in here, like diamonds and all of my gear. We're going to add the diamonds from the shop to that, obviously, and that will need to go into our ender chest. Uh, what are you doing out there? I finished going through collecting up all of the items and our shulker boxes are all ready to go. If we take a look inside, we can see what I've put together. So I've got a bunch of empty shulker boxes just to be able to use for different projects that we're working on. We've got ones with our armor and some other miscellaneous blocks. We've got our tools. We've got some extra stone for just in case. And we've got a few other things like rockets and food. With that completed, I am feeling very prepared and ready to start our project for today. For the farm that we are going to be building, we are going to need to craft up a bunch of buckets because we are going to need in total 14. So I went ahead and crafted up 17. That should be fine. With my buckets, I'm going to head over to a lava pool and scoop up a bunch of lava. We are also going to need to craft up a bunch of redstone components that require cobblestone. So let's get some cobblestone. There are also a few items that we need to get from the shopping district. We need to get some iron. Let's grab three stacks here, which will be a total of three diamonds. We are also going to need some quartz, which is three stacks for one diamond. And let's go ahead and get six. Those collected. Let's see. We're going to need 28 pistons. Let's go ahead and get that. We are also going to need one observer. And finally, we are going to need 28 furnaces and we can only get 25. I didn't collect enough cobblestone. We also need 14 target blocks, but I only have seven hay bales. So yeah, I'll just use some of this wheat right here. It's almost like I planned for it. One really important item that I can't forget is a name tag. Maybe I should buy a couple of extras just in case. I think that should be pretty good for the name. I think I've been able to collect everything. So we've got our lava buckets. We've got our redstone materials. We have our building materials and some more building materials. Now it's just time to actually do the building. Hold up. 
we've forgotten the most important item. I don't know if I've told you what we are building yet, but as you may have seen from the thumbnail, we are building a skulk farm. And for a skulk farm, we need to collect a bunch of skulk catalysts to be able to convert the stone into skulk. And for that, we need a deep dark biome. And it just so happens I know where a deep dark biome is located. Let's head down into this cave and see if we can find it. What could go wrong? Oh, this could be bad. No, go, no, don't. Ah, uh, that was rude. No, go away. No, I don't want to die. I mean, uh, I totally had that handled. I think we found it. Going to have to be careful. Sneaking in. Don't want to trigger anything. And, ooh, I actually, hold on. I need to get my silk touch hoe so that way I can collect those bulk catalysts. Oh, here is our first one. Now we need to collect four of these and maybe we'll go ahead and just break these. Don't trigger anything. These, I don't wanna die. And I think that we just got super lucky because we have three right here, which is all that we're going to need after the first one. So we got one, two, and three. Let's break that. And we'll get number two. I think I'm setting things off. This is not a good start. All right, number three, and we'll take you. Come with me. With those collected, let's get out of here. I see daylight. We're almost there. I think overall that was a successful trip down to the deep dark and back. Now that we have everything collected, let's head over to the end where we are going to be building this farm. We are here in the end. And you may be wondering, what is that on your head? Well, this is a custom hat which is made out of a carved pumpkin. And I'm wearing it so that way, if I accidentally look at an Enderman, he won't decide to attack me because that would be sad. The farm that we are going to be building today is based on a couple of different farms. The first is an Enderman farm, which is a design that Ijevan came up with. And I'm following a tutorial by Shulkercraft, both of which are linked in the description down below. I am also using stone generators, which are based on a design that came from a moss farm created by Raiseworks, which is also linked in the description down below. But the combination of the Enderman farm and the stone generators will make up our Skulk farm. The first thing that we need to do is to head out into the void where we are going to be building the farm. So in order to do that, we want to go down and I'm going to place this lava here and let it go down to the bottom. And then I'm going to put the water in to allow it to create a cobblestone column going all the way to the bottom. Well, that was nerve wracking, but we're down here. Now we need to get started with making a little walkway that's going to take us out into the void. We need to create a platform that we can work from as we are building the farm. We've got everything built up on this platform to be able to start making the farm. And the first part of the farm that we are going to build is the stone generator. So let's get out our redstone and our building blocks and get started with that. I finished getting the stone generators built and I've made a couple of modifications from the design by Raiseworks. So the first modification that I made was that I put these furnaces underneath the pistons and behind the pistons and that's so that when the pistons are pushing the stone across, if they run into the other one, it won't cause the machine to break because furnaces are not movable objects. And then the other change that I made was adding these target blocks in the back to be able to power the pistons because in the original design, the redstone went down and underneath the piston and powered it that way. But with the furnaces there, that was not possible. So those were the changes that I made. And now that we have the stone generators in, the next thing that we need to do is get the Enderman farm built. The last step in this farm is to get the Endermite down into that little hole there and it's really difficult so i need to name him let's see if i can name him please oh no i needed to name him before he got in much better the second time around so i was able to get the name tag on him but it doesn't seem to be showing up here we'll just have to hope that he doesn't despawn we've got the endermite into place and i think 
If this farm is working, you can see right here with this Enderman, he went racing all... Why aren't you going all the way down? What's wrong with you? That's not a good sign. All right, let's drop down and see if it's going to work. Well, it's definitely working. There are a lot of Endermen falling down, and I think we can get this started so that we can get some Skulk generated. I just need to get the last pieces out in order to do that. I've got the Skulk Catalyst in place. Let's give this farm a test. We just need to get it turned on, get the stone generating, and out it comes. Let's see if this is going to work. So far. Ooh, here we are. Yes, it's working. This is amazing. We're going to be able to get so much skulk from this thing. Ah, my favorite block. Let's collect it all. In just about five minutes, I was able to get quite a bit of skulk as well as a few of the other skulk blocks and that is going to be really useful to have. One of the things that we need to work on with the farm is a way to handle all of the ender pearls that are generated because they just have too many and it could cause some problem. So I've gone back and got a bunch of hoppers and a few dispensers that we can hook up to just shoot these things out into the void and have them destroyed. I've hooked up the hoppers and you can see that we have a bunch of endermen falling. If we come down here and see how this is going to work, which I'm going to simulate with this lever, it's going to shoot out all of those ender pearls into the void to get destroyed, but we don't cause any lag issues with how many come out. So I'm going to do a test to see how much I can collect in about 30 minutes. In just over an hour, I was able to get two full shulker boxes with bulk blocks as well as almost two shulker boxes of the skulk vein. Now, over here, we have some of these folk sensors as well as the shriekers. Those are a little harder to get because this farm is one block too low. And so this would need to go up about one more block in order to really get those efficiently. As it is, if it, when this platform comes out and there are sensors or shriekers in this middle area, the endermen don't die when they hit the ground. So it's a bit of a problem and I will probably need to fix that in the future. But for now, I think we have spent plenty of time with this farm. There's one more thing that I want to do before we end the episode. The last thing I want to do before we end today's episode is to get a second shop built up for our spoke blocks. And this is where we're going to do it in this one. We have a little bit of a tight space to work with here, so we're going to have to get creative in order to make this shop work. I really tried to make that space work, but it is just too small. By the time you add in the walls for what you want to do, it just makes it so that there is no space to work with. I moved over one slot and now we have plenty of room to work with and I've started making a staircase going down here because we are going to make this shop be in the basement. I've got the interior all finished up and let's go ahead and take a look at what we have going on. When you come in, we have this entryway which has a way to drop down to the basement and then a way to come up once you've finished making the purchases. If we drop down, you'll see we end up right in front of the inventory and over on the left, we have the skulk blocks which are going to be one diamond for three stacks. The skulk veins will be one diamond per stack and then for the Skulk sensors, you can get 16 for one diamond and the Shriekers, you can get four for one diamond. I still have a few things that I want to do with the interior of the shop, but I think that is where we are going to leave it for today. We have made a lot of progress in today's episode and getting the Skulk farm up is going to be super useful because not only will we be able to use it for the shop, but I will be able to use it for some of the builds that I want to do over in the main base area, which I think we shall be taking a little bit closer look at next time. But until then, thank you so much for joining me. It's been great having you here. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And until next time, see you later.